those who lost loved ones in that tragedy, how to prevent it in the future. Congressman Richard Hudson, a North Carolina Republican, uh, already trying to act on this long before he started hearing from those who tragically were involved in that day and some like this beautiful little girl who survived that day. But Congressman, the question always becomes how likely is it that you'll reach common ground with your Democratic colleagues to do something about this? Where do things stand? Well, Neil, I'm not sure. You know, Republicans are ready to work together to solve this problem. You know, only two significant school, safe, school safety bills have passed Congress recently. Both were Republican bills passed by a Republican Congress, signed by a Republican president. And, you know, we've put forth 12 different bills that are policy alternatives that can actually make our schools safer, that can, can help uh, intervene with young people before they reach a crisis point. Uh, we have solutions. But the Democrats aren't interested in that. They've, they've put forth this choice between either gun control or do nothing and, and let children die. Um, but what we say, look, there's a third choice. It's, let's do things that will actually harden schools, things that will actually intervene with these individuals. I mean, imagine if we'd intervene with this shooter in Uvalde before he dropped out of high school. Um, we've really got to get to the root cause of these, and Republicans are ready to do that. All right, but I'm, I'm sure you don't mean to imply that, that Democrats are going to just let children die. I mean, part of the middle ground I was talking about, Congressman, is whether uh, Republicans might be opening to limit some of these weapons that get in the hands of, of, of little more than kids. I mean, uh, would you be open to limiting sales of some of these weapons to those under the age of 21? I don't think the age is the issue. I think the, the, the issue is we need to keep guns out of the hands of people that shouldn't have those guns and, and doing a better job of intervening with these individuals before they get to a breaking point. But would that also mean tighter background checks, sir? Well, there's a background, there's certainly room to improve background checks, but what the Democrats are offering are six bills that would have done nothing to stop any of these, these shootings. Um, if gun control worked, Chicago would be the safest city in America. So the idea of, of limiting those sales to, to those under the age of 21, that's something you would not consider. That's a, that's a non-starter for you. Well, I'm not going to tell a 19-year-old paratrooper at Fort Bragg, North Carolina, that we're going to deploy you to Syria and give you an automatic weapon or a million-dollar weapon system while your 19-year-old spouse is back home in Spring Lake, North Carolina, and can't have a shotgun to defend herself. Um, I, I don't think age is the issue, Neil. I mean, young people have been able to buy guns throughout our history. No, we I, haven't I had these mass shootings that, before. Sir, but, but more than 8 out of 10 of these violent incidents at school have involved those under the age of 21. That's why I'm raising that and why even some of your colleagues seem to be open to that, not to the full degree of just banning these weapon sales, but maybe limiting them or having a waiting period for those under the age of 21. Well, that would make people feel good, Neil, but it wouldn't stop these shootings because you if you know? look at Columbine, you know that? because you look at Columbine and those another person bought the gun for the individuals. You look at a new town, that person stole the guns from his mother. Uh, you know, criminals you are going to get their hands on guns. You don't think there's anything that could be done, sir, on the gun front? We have more guns than we do Absolutely. people. Do you think that we can, should be looking at limiting that? In no way trampling on the Second Amendment and, and what's near and dear to gun owners, and most of them overwhelmingly responsible, but to, to, to sort of fetter out those who might not be. Well, according to the Ninth Circuit, Neil, it would trample on the Second Amendment. They ruled that it was unconstitutional to limit sales based on age. And I'm telling you, what we ought to do is, enter, is, is, you know, every one of these school shooters was a troubled male who had a trauma in their background, who had, had probably on a behavioral drug. Almost all of them were. Uh, these, are, these are the commonalities we need to be looking at. And we need to do and a better job of intervening with these And the vast majority of them were able folks. to get those guns legally. And they're troubled souls, as you say, sir. Right. They are. But the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals says it's illegal to limit the sales based on age. And not every shooter... Do you think we should weapon. address that? Maybe whatever the Ninth Circuit <clears throat> Court of Appeals decided that maybe now's the time with people getting killed almost every other day that it stopped. You know, you're grilling me, asking me why I don't want to do something that wouldn't work when I'm offering solutions that would actually work. I've got a bill, H.R. 7966, which would put a billion dollars into making sure we have a school resource officer in every school. It would put a billion dollars towards putting guidance counselors in schools. Right well, now, well, our guidance well, counselors are stretched I take too nothing thin. away from that, sir. I didn't want you to think otherwise. I'm just wondering where the two sides, that is you and your Democratic colleagues, might find common ground. They see a little bit of room on guns. You say a lot of 
room on dealing with mental health issues, locking down schools, making them more, you know, uh, resistant to someone just breaking in. Do you think there is some common area there where you hold the possibility for a deal? I absolutely do. In 2018, we passed the Stop School Violence Act, which did some of the things that I'm talking about. And, you know, Democrats and Republicans supported that. I think that's the common ground is, is what are the common denominators in all these shootings? How do we stop these from happening? Uh, it's, it's not banning guns. It, if that were the case, we wouldn't have crime in Chicago. We wouldn't have shootings in California. Uh, you know, the, the gun control is not going to solve the problem. This is a problem of broken males who have issues. They're showing signs of it, but no one is intervening with these individuals. Um, and sure, we could do a better job of making sure individuals who have mental health issues can't get their hands on guns. There certainly could possibly be some common ground there. But what we're saying is let's start with what we know will work. And let's put our put our money there. But you would have to acknowledge that we have a disproportionate amount of violence in this country, and mental health issues are the world over. I don't think we have a U.S. lock on that. Do you, do you think that that notwithstanding, there are too many guns in this country? No, because in the 1950s we had plenty of guns and we didn't have the shootings. In the 1960s we didn't have the shootings. In the 1970s we didn't have the shootings. So what are the causes now? We have kids on behavioral drugs. We have a lot more kids in single parent homes. We have a lot more kids experiencing trauma. Uh, th these are the causes and these are the things we ought to be tackling. To ban guns and say we've done our job is disingenuous because it won't solve the problem. We have to solve the root causes of this problem. We have a lot more guns than we did in the 1950s though, right? We do, but you know, we had a lot of guns then too. Fair enough. Sir, thank you very, very much, Congressman. Uh, Richard Hudson of North Carolina.